morning from Baku, Azerbaijan. Today's October 5th and it marks our one full year traveling on the road. We've been getting a lot of questions about what we carry with us, so today we're gonna go through our bags and show you everything. Our clothes, our electronics, everything. I've been wanting to do this for so long. We've made some changes along the way, we've kept a lot of things. We'll even give you some tips on how we go through airport security. All of this is carry-on. We never check our bags, unless they force us to. I think you're gonna learn a lot about our personalities as we go through our bags today. Amber's highly organized and mine looks like it was packed by an eight-year-old. I'm not joking when I say that for four years straight, I researched which backpack I was going to travel with. I was adamant that I would travel with just one bag and never do the front pack. I'll explain later why this is more necessary, but for now I'm gonna set this one off to the side. I love this bag so much. I'm 5'2 for reference and it was really difficult for me to find a bag that actually fit my body and fit my waist. The Peak Design 45 liter is what I settled with and I'm actually really happy with this one and I would not change it. I didn't do nearly as much research as Amber did looking for a bag, but I still tried out several. This is the Osprey Porter 46 liter. I think it's the perfect size. I love it. It's got a lifetime warranty, so I'll never have to get rid of it. The first thing I love about this bag are these front straps. You can strap anything you want to the outside of this, and this will hold it all together. And then, ugh, if you want to compress your bag, ugh, these straps push everything in and compress it, and then it hides all your zippers, so it makes it that much more secure. I love it. Packable day bag is necessary for us. This is what I use to go hiking, and if I ever need to use this as a front pack, I can. My laptop, I kind of just shove in here and hope that it never cracks under pressure. This is just the only place I can get it to fit. This shawl is one of my most important items that I carry. Its main purpose is to cover my hair and shoulders in certain places and certain situations when the need arises, but it also can be used as a blanket, as a scarf, and even a bathing suit covering. In this front pocket, my kitchen. This grungy looking bag is where I keep oil and spices and cooking utensils. I have chopsticks and a little spatula. The things missing from Airbnb kitchens the most are cooking utensils and salt and pepper and oil. We always travel with food. And so what I also have in here is a cup of soup. You pour this into a cup, hot water, and it's a cup of soup. Exactly how it sounds. Instant coffee. It's not the best, but you never know what your Airbnb is gonna have. This is just easier to travel with and you know you can always make coffee no matter where you are. Plastic grocery bags. These are also good just for anything. You need to bring food on a train or just extra. Nice heavy duty plastic bags. This is another thing that I would not travel without and that's a towel. We don't use it every day, but there are several situations where you're going to need a towel and wish you had one. And I'm so thankful that we do. This is a 10 liter dry bag. We have a lot of equipment and expensive electronics that we carry. And if we're ever in a wet situation, this is where we put all that to keep it safe. And I'm pretty sure in every pocket is change, literally every pocket and every bag. I used to keep one coin from each country for a souvenir, but you're never gonna get rid of all your change. So it just, you end up having a lot. My favorite part that I've been dying to show you are the clothes that I carry. I like to consider us minimalist travelers, but I'm not entirely sure that's true. And I want you guys to be the judge of that. These are the clothes that we've carried with us for the last year. Some we've bought along the way and some we've shipped home. Starting with my one sweatshirt. You either love them or you hate them. Packing cubes, we won't travel without them, but not everybody thinks they're necessary. That also goes for people who like to roll their clothes or fold them. I personally fold, Nathan rolls. It's just personal preference. These are awesome. It keeps all of your clothes together. And then when you're trying to unpack and pack, these work really well. In this pile, I have three tank tops, two t-shirts, one thermal long sleeve, and two sweaters. As far as t-shirts goes, I have one, two, five, six t-shirts, one regular tank top, and then one long sleeve. None of my t-shirts are special in any way. They're all cotton. This is from Costco. These are all the bottoms that I carry. One pair of jean shorts, one pair of athletic shorts, one pair of thermal pants, one pair of hiking pants, what I like to call my dressy outfit, which is just a skirt that has cargo pockets. Pretty cool in my opinion. 
and one pair of jeans that I actually found at a thrift store in Romania. I don't personally enjoy carrying jeans. I don't wear them that often and I will be keeping these back home once we get home. But I just had to have them. And pants. I have two regular pairs of shorts, black and gray, running shorts with underwear. These are awesome. I will never ever leave home without a pair of these. A pair of pants, pajama bottoms. These are comfortable. We spend a lot of time in our Airbnb, which is why I also have another pair of running shorts. And then a bathing suit. I don't need this because my running shorts with the underwear in them, they work just as well, if not better. So I don't need this. This little guy has my bras, socks, and underwear, and my bathing suit. I carry two pairs of socks, eight pair of underwear, and two sports bras. That's it. I have five pairs of underwear, six pairs of socks, and then another pair of shorts that also has underwear, so we'll count that as six. Bought this jacket in Germany. It's my favorite. I also have two coats. This one is a rain jacket, it's a little bit heavier. And then this one is a lighter windbreaker, still kind of water resistant. Almost forgot to mention my most important clothing item, and that is this travel romper. It's a two-in-one outfit, and it's got a zippered pocket. I wear this all the time. I will never travel without this piece of clothing because it works in so many situations. I just think every female should travel with one of these, to be honest. Several months back, we shipped home a small box of winter clothes, which had a hat, gloves, a pair of hiking socks, and a packable puffy coat. That's it for my big compartment. If you're wondering why I don't put my laptop in my laptop sleeve, it's because I do have a bag obsession, and that's where all of my bags go. This is our laundry bag. I personally do not enjoy putting my dirty clothes in with my clean clothes. I separate them by shoving them into this. I really recommend having a laundry bag. I know a lot of travelers will carry 15 shirts, 15 pairs of underwear so they always have something clean, but we very, very rarely travel with dirty clothes. We always wash our clothes about the day before we travel. We would rather pay a couple of dollars to get our clothes washed than to carry 15 shirts and 15 pairs of underwear and then have a bunch of dirty clothing as we go. This is the first time that we are taking it someplace to get it washed, but they are around. It keeps your bag smaller so that you never have to check your baggage, which saves you money in the long run. But if I do have a dirty piece of laundry that I don't want to mix with my clean stuff, I'll put it in one of these side pockets that doesn't have mesh and it keeps it separated. Raincoat. This super cool tote bag was actually a gift from some friends and we use it to go grocery shopping. My biggest complaint with this bag is this second pocket. Right now I keep all of our GoPro stuff and my watch that I used to wear every single day and it won't charge anymore. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's dead and I can't use it. So it sits in this pocket. Okay. This is my most regrettable item that I carry that I don't actually regret at all. And that's like a cute purse backpack. Do I need this? No. Do I love it and use it? Absolutely. I don't want to have just all black, so this is my little brown edition. Folder for important documents. $3 fanny pack we just bought in Bulgaria. And last but not least, another scarf. I can cover my hair, my shoulders. I think this one's a little cuter and more stylish than the black one, so that's why I carry two. What do you think? That's it. Hotel slippers watch charging cord that may or may not work, GoPro accessories, extra selfie stick. The only pocket in this compartment that I use is this top one because it has a zipper. The rest of these, they're not very deep. There's no way for things to actually stay in there. So if you tip your bag sideways, upside down, overhead compartment, anything. My bag fell right into a puddle. Yeah, Nathan's bag was totally dropped. Everything's gonna fall out and your organization is gone. I carry three pairs of shoes with me, which is one pair too many. All I carry in these side pockets are my shoes. Right now, they have my zero sandals, which are great for everything and anything. Those might stink, I'm sorry. I will always carry these sandals with me. These are the Woman's Vivo Trail FG shoes. They are my favorite travel shoe. I like that they're all black, and I will always and forever travel with just this shoe, as long as Vivo keeps making them. If I need to squeeze my Vivos in there, I absolutely can. It's not a big deal. This bag just happened to come with the perfect shoe compartment for me. This pocket is where things get a little more complicated. 
Here's that third pair of shoes that I don't need, but carry anyways. Makeup bag, adapter, self-explanatory, eyeglass case, power strip. You can't travel without one of these if you have multiple things to charge. We love this thing and it's worked out great. My toiletries. I'm quite pleased with how well it all fits in there. As far as my toiletries goes, this has actually changed a lot over the past year. There's products that I just can't buy everywhere. And I did have one friend bring me some specific items from home and that was great. But the one thing I've also learned is to carry laundry detergent. We do laundry at least once a week because we don't have that many clothes with us. And this is very important and comes in handy. If we're ever staying somewhere that has extra liquid detergent to spare, we usually tap this one off. I also carry this workout band. Don't ask me when the last time was that I used that. This is my catch-all compartment. I did not come up with this idea. If you're a female who travels with jewelry, I highly recommend organizing it with a pill case. Another packable bag. Thank you, Aunt Fran. This was a gift from a family member back in Sweden. Extra bottles of shampoo and conditioner. There is nothing in this pocket except for an extra mask. Next is this top compartment up here. This is where I keep my toiletries bag, travel towel, definitely need one of these, more change, extra Ziploc bags, you never know when you're gonna need one of these, and that's it. Not one, but two externals, wet wipes, and a pen. Now for the main show. On top I have my electronics organizer. This is what this front pocket wants to be with all of these, and it's not. This is where I keep all my cords and everything else. I'll go over this in detail later. A winterish beanie, electric razor. This pocket has all the stuff that I wish I didn't have to carry, but I carry just in case. Travel medicine, more medicine, first aid kit, malaria pills. The rest of this stuff is just thrown in here. This main compartment does have two side zippers, but I don't really use those. That's where I put things that I don't use very often. This is my third wallet, my backup. I used to put my passport in here, but I bought another one. This has extra credit cards and some cash, just in case something happens to the other one, I always have backup. For any women watching this who may be wondering, tampons are obsolete in most places. I still have a love-hate relationship with pads, so I have started to use this Diva Cup. I think it's really great and environmentally friendly. And one other thing to know, I did switch over to an IUD a year before we started traveling because I knew for me, getting a prescription of birth control was probably not going to be very easy in other countries. So that's what I decided to do. More medicine, headlamp, life straw. Never use this and I really wish I didn't carry it with me, but I just can't bring myself to leave it behind or take it home. Although I have my toiletry bags here, I also have tons of extra travel bottles. These are gold. They're really hard to find anywhere else outside the US. I don't know why. My aunt and uncle and cousins met up with us in Sweden and they gave us all of the travel bottles from their hotel room. And just a little travel tip, not really a tip, this is what we do. I'm not saying that you should. This is my toiletry bag. If I ask for liquids at the airport, I pull this out, put it on the conveyor, but then I just leave these extra ones in my bag and they've never said anything. So as long as you have travel bottles, appropriate size, just take whatever you need. You might get them thrown away, but I'm not gonna throw these away myself. I'll let them tell me I need to. Two medicines that I wanna mention because I have used them since we've left, altitude sickness pills and Imodium. Let me just say, there have been multiple situations where you don't have the ability to run to the bathroom every five minutes, so you pop one of these in and it helps block everything for the time being. I would highly recommend you travel with a bottle yourself. Sunscreen, hair styling clay, instant coffee. Onto these zippered pockets on the inside. There's one mesh one and then one that's more enclosed. But in here I have a first aid kit. Mine's a little bit different than Amber's. In the age of COVID, you need a thermometer. We use this too often. But then regular band-aids, gauze, wound cleaner, stuff like that. More instant coffee, a headlamp. This is our nighttime lens. It doesn't have stabilization or autofocus, so we only use it for set still shots at night. So if you ever see a nice starry shot, this is what we use. One thing I wouldn't take with us again, are these other lens carrying cases. We use our lenses all the time 
and these are kind of obsolete because our lenses are either on our camera or in our bag somewhere, so we don't need these. In this other zippered pocket, I have sandals and a mask, and that's it. The last thing that I don't keep in my bag, but I have on me all the time, are my shoes. Both Amber and I only wear barefoot shoes. It's not for everybody, but we have found it to be far better. They travel flat, they're light, and very, very comfortable. They're waterproof, and they have lasted over a year. Let me know what shoes you have that you wear every day that last more than a year. These are Vivo Barefoot hiking shoes. Link in the description down below. These aren't cheap, but they are so perfect and I'll buy them for the rest of my life. This is like the junk drawer in everybody's kitchen. That's what's in here. I don't even know what's fully in here because I haven't looked in a while. Wow. Okay, got a pad, mask, another mask, my rainbow toothbrush that I bought in Sweden, joint and muscle relief gel, hand sanitizer, chapstick, spatula, sugar, Tongue scraper, bottle cap, hair gel, more toothpicks, and a little bead of amber. All right, I think that's everything in my bag. It's hard to believe that all of this fits in this bag, but it does. If I had one complaint about my bag, just one, it's the comfort's not the greatest. I only rate it like a six out of 10 as far as comfort. But that's it. I'll still continue to carry it and just complain every once in a while about my back aching. Okay. Well, she means every time we have to walk. The last compartment in my bag is the back. My backpack is going to be more comfortable than Amber's for a big reason, which are these clips right here. This keeps your bag stuck to your back much more comfortable. There's this one more pocket here. You can put your laptop back here. It's huge. It goes all the way down. And then there's another compartment here that is separate and you can keep papers and stuff flat. I just have tickets and masks. And then one last thing that I have is my bag cover. My bag is not waterproof, so anytime it's raining, I can throw this on. It keeps everything clean. If I have something strapped to the back, I can put this over it and it just kind of keeps everything together. And then when I shove it back here, it makes my bag that much more comfortable to wear. I think that's about it. Last, we're gonna talk about our day packs. My day pack is another Osprey. This is the Daylight Plus, and I got the Plus because it's the only one that would fit my 16 inch laptop. I like having a smaller bag in the front of me almost at all times because then everything that's important and I need, it's there and it's safe, and you just never wanna keep anything valuable behind you. That is true. Passport, always in the front pack. Money, always in the front pocket or in the front pack. I like this bag a lot and I'll probably always travel with it because it packs really flat. Hat, got my camera batteries. I carry 10 at all times. Deodorant, bag of nuts. This is actually where I keep all of our extra food or water, which is why I take my own water bottle. Big thing of Vaseline. I have a different power cube that I take with me. And the only reason it's different is because it has four charging spots on the bottom for USB. This has saved us a lot. Sunglasses, camera cleaner, passport wallet, my big lens, perfume that I picked up a couple countries back. I did not carry perfume this entire time we traveled. And I started to realize, you know, I just don't like smelling like BO all the time. So <laughs> that's what this is for. That's also why I keep my deodorant in this backpack because we both need it. This is my, what I would call electronics bag, smaller than Nathan's, the most important. I've got my little camera battery charger that I got from Amazon years ago. It's filthy, but it still works. I have a much smaller portable battery than Nathan, but they're both Anchor brand. Love this. I have the same battery, it's just a lot bigger. Cords, that's pretty much it. I have my camera that is way less maintenance than our big one. That's it for my main pocket. On to my little small one. This is where it gets a little messy. I've got headphones, I've got deodorant, I've got sunscreen, hand sanitizer, a little portable mirror, very useful. Contacts case, chapstick, lens cap, a spork, that's it. Actually, what I actually really love is this pocket that doesn't have a zipper on it, but it's a catch-all for everything. Spicy sunflower seeds, sunglasses. I have tickets from so much. This is just trash, I just need to throw this stuff away. Plastic bags that they give you at airport security. 
I actually really, really like these, so I took like six of them. Lotion, more change from countries. And then I also have a catch-all small zipper pocket, more sunglasses, masks, sleeping mask. Definitely need one. I got rid of mine almost immediately. I lost the lens. <gasps> it's probably in there somewhere. One thing that I am missing right now is my drone. My drone container compartment is about the size of this and it's not very heavy. In fact, this is heavier than what my drone is. I don't have it. We expected to go to countries where it wasn't allowed, so I shipped it home with my cousin when we were in Sweden. I'm really sad I don't have it, but I couldn't take it. So we might buy a new one in the next month or two. We'll see. Now these are the electronics that you may or may not need, but we do in order to vlog on the road. I have an entire electronics case. The biggest things in here are two hard drives. These are Lacey drives. One is five terabytes, one is four terabytes. And this is all of our backup footage that we've ever filmed. We carry everything with us for now. Also in here is just all of its respective cords, SIM cards, different batteries for things. This is my favorite travel organizer. There's so many pockets in here and you can move this upside down and everything and nothing falls out, it stays organized, which is what I need most. I think it's also slightly waterproof too. I carry the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It does what I need it to do. And to be honest, it probably does a lot more than what I need it to do. I have the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Both of these are 2019 versions. I also carry two externals. These are both four terabytes each and they are both full. Besides the large externals, we actually carry smaller ones. I have all of my backup photos on this one, which is one terabyte, and this is one terabyte, which is a backup for my computer. I have the same hard drive as this attached <laughs> to my laptop so that I remember to back up my computer because that uh, baby wants. All in all, we have 20 terabytes worth of storage that we travel with. Here's a closer look at our camera gear. We have the Sony a6500 with the 10 to 18 millimeter f4 lens attached, perfect for vlogging. We also have the 18 to 105 millimeter f4 lens, which is great for b-roll. Attached to our camera at all times is a Rode microphone. We carry the GoPros 7 and 8, and we also have the Sony ZV-1, which is our backup camera, but the only one that comes with the front-facing screen. These are the 10 batteries that go to my Sony a6500, three SD cards used between these two cameras, this mini tripod does exactly what it's intended to do, and we leave it attached to our camera at all times. And this light attachment goes on this camera when we need. Lastly, we wanna go over the things that we would never travel without individually, because they're different. I've stressed this once already, maybe even twice, but I'm telling you, a travel shawl is that important. Maybe for males too, but as a female, I just, you really need this in certain places, in certain situations. For me, when we go to Airbnbs, we still cook. And with that, a kitchen. I would always have salt and pepper, cooking oil, just something so that you can make a meal when you show up. What is this called? Power strip. This power strip may not be for everybody if you do not travel with as many electronics as we do. We would never travel without this. It is the perfect amount of ports for us to charge everything that we need every single night. Our laptops, camera batteries, and our cell phones. We could not use this without our adapter. So this goes without saying, if you're going to travel outside the country anywhere, you're gonna need one of these. Mm -hmm. It is a pain, it's, it's a giant brick, but it's necessary. And that leads us into our big batteries. Even if you don't have as much things to charge as we do, it's nice to be able to charge your phone at a minimum. We need these and we will always travel with this, even if we're not vlogging. These are so, so convenient for us. I do want to mention cell phones. I carry an Android and Amber carries an iPhone. It's nice having two different ones. Sometimes my signal is better, sometimes hers is, sometimes Google Maps works better on my phone. It's nice having two different things. And it happens all the time. All the time. All the time. When one phone is failing, the other person over, like compensates. It's amazing. Also, make sure your phone is unlocked. It's highly unlikely that it's not going to be unlocked nowadays, but that way you can buy a SIM card wherever you are and you don't have to worry about it. Do not worry about a worldwide cell phone plan. It's convenient if you can afford it, but data in other countries is so much cheaper when you land than anything else. And if you want data as soon as you land, you can pay for an eSIM. They are not that much more expensive and it's worth it. I will never not travel with a travel towel. There are situations that we come to when one is not provided, 
and you just need it. That's as simple as that. One thing I mentioned that we don't have a rubber scrubby that fits in your hand and it's flat, it stays clean, and you can dry it really fast. It never stinks and it's the perfect travel shower companion. You can't use a washcloth, you can't use any kind of loofah because if you want to shower in the morning before you travel, now you have this wet piece of something in your bag and it's gonna stink eventually. It really is. We left it in Switzerland. But we'll get a new one in just a couple weeks, so I'm really looking forward to that. That is our must-have toiletry item. One other slight thing about this bag is it doesn't have cool clips like Nathan's. It's got these weird little metal things, so it takes a little bit longer for me to get mine situated. I don't know our exact weight on our bags because things change. I think Amber's total front and backpack total is about 16 kilograms, and mine's either the same or maybe one kilogram less. I love traveling hands-free. We can get to our passport. passports, you can get oh. to your wallet, everything's right here. I could not imagine having to drag a suitcase everywhere. But specifically with like us recording all the time. Because we want to take you guys with us. Yeah. And show you every step of the way. This is everything that we've carried on our backs for this past year. We really wouldn't make too many changes. It's all carry-on and it works great for us. If you want a more detailed list of our equipment, our favorite items and our bags, we have a link to our kit in the description down below. If you follow along in our videos and you're wondering how we jumped from Slovakia to Azerbaijan, this was our one year of travel and we knew we wanted to make this video and if it didn't happen now, it probably was never going to happen. So we're sorry, but we will get back to Slovakia in our next video. If you found this packing video at all useful, or if you have any suggestions that you want to provide, please comment down below. We would love to hear it. We like to consider ourselves experienced travelers, but there's always something more to learn, another tip that can be provided from other travelers like you. So we'll see you in Slovakia. Bye. Bye.